Good morning, everybody. Mark Finan here in the Home Weather Office. Today is the fourth day of April 2023. You're watching the morning briefing. And this morning, it is cold out there. As I looked out the, uh, the window here from the home office, there are areas of frost on the grounds. <laughs> the grounds of the vast estate of the home office. Anyway, but blue sky above, and we should see a pretty nice looking day. Less wind than yesterday, and temperatures a little warm, but it'll still be cooler than average. Most valley spots staying in the low 60s at best, I would think, today. But it might feel a little bit better because we don't have the wind that we had around during the day yesterday. Temperatures are going to be warming over the next couple of days. I think that uh, this morning is probably the coldest morning we're going to see. And while the next couple of mornings won't be warm, they won't be as cold as what we've seen today. So if you've been protecting your plants and that sort of thing the last couple of mornings, I think that beyond today, you probably won't have to. Let's get to what's happening out there this morning. It is a beautiful, clear morning. This is the way the satellite looks. And as you can see, we have clear skies up and down the valley. Of course, there is the impressive snowpack in the Sierra. That's what all of this is. There, There is a little bit of cloud cover on the east side of the Sierra, but all in all, we are just having a good looking day. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if once again, we see some clouds develop along the crest of the Sierra this afternoon and maybe getting down to the west slope. But I think the shower chances are going to be less than yesterday, not zero, but I think they are going to be somewhat less than yesterday. There still could be a couple of stray snow showers up here today, but um, what we are going to see is this beautiful clear sky we have over the Sierra now give way to a few clouds during the afternoon. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful morning. Let's get to some of the model stuff and show you what uh, some of the models are thinking. This is the North American model. A lot of the cold air is still in place. The coldest air has now moved off to our east into Utah and Nevada. Behind it, we're starting to get some what we call warm air advection, although it isn't going to be warming. This is this afternoon and this evening, and there's that chance of snow showers over the Sierra. Probably overdone on this model, but it gives you the idea that we may see some of that activity. But while yesterday we were seeing some afternoon showers around Grass Valley, Forest Hill, and Georgetown, I don't think that's going to be the case today. I think today anything should be farther up the hill. And again, light and you know just kind of just kind of a nuisance sort of thing. This is first thing on Wednesday morning. Again, it's cool with light winds. You notice there isn't much of a pressure gradient here, but you do notice rain off the coast. This is part of the warm air advection. So in other words, the coldest air is moving out, warmer air is moving in. And so temperatures will start to rise over the next couple of days. This is Wednesday evening. There is rain up off the north coast. Yesterday we talked about this atmospheric river and it still appears as though the best part of that AR is going to be staying to our north. This is Thursday morning. We are not as cold, but we will see increasing clouds. But actually Thursday, we could make the mid, maybe even upper 60s. And we are talking about a chance of rain on Friday. This is Thursday at five o'clock. We'll see increasing clouds. There will be rain in Lake County. There'll be rain up on the North Coast. And then as we get into the day on Friday, there will be some very light rain going across the area. And snow levels, let's talk about that. The snow level will be up around 6,000 feet with light accumulations, a couple of inches of snow at best. This is Friday morning. There may be chain controls first thing Friday morning, but we're talking about nuisance chain controls, not enough to close down the road and that sort of thing. And all of that decreases as we get into Friday afternoon and into the day on Saturday. I do think things are gonna look pretty good. And what we're talking about here are accumulations of less than a 10th of an inch of rain in the valley. So let's pick it up with the GFS on Saturday. This shows a slightly different solution, but I think the weekend is going to work out okay. So as we get into the day on Saturday, this is Saturday afternoon, we'll have sun and clouds, but it is much, much warmer. The thicknesses have come up, the coldest air is now gone, and then for Sunday, Easter Sunday, this is Sunday afternoon, you do see showers here, probably overdone on this model. But I think what we're going to see is a mixture of sun and clouds with temperatures getting into the 70s, maybe 73 to 75 in, in much of the valley. I think that's going to work out. Now, the models have been kind of going back and forth on what's going to happen on Monday. This is Monday midday, some light rain coming through. However, if I can do this, let's see how easy this is going to be. Let's just give me one second here. Let me go back to the zero Z run last night. And what you'll see is that this model was much more vigorous with a rain chance on Monday and much colder air coming in behind it as well. 
the latest model, the 6Z run, isn't as aggressive with that and uh, still waiting on the 12Z run to come in. But either way, it does look as though Monday will have a chance of showers. How much it's going to be and how much cold air behind it uh, remains to be seen. So the bottom line here for Northern California is that we'll likely see if some showers Friday morning, hundredths of an inch of rain, not a tenth of an inch of rain, getting warmer, but still don't see sunny and 80 on the horizon, but maybe partly cloudy and 75 by Sunday. That wouldn't be too bad. All right, one other thing going to talk about today. It looks like another day of uh, severe weather in, in parts of the Midwest. So this is the latest from the SPC. And as you can see, they're highlighting two areas here with what are called moderate categories. There's one in Iowa and into Illinois, another one in southern Missouri and extending through Arkansas. And this is the chances of uh, convective activity. But if you look at their tornado parameters, they have a couple of the same areas highlighted. And while 15% doesn't sound that uh, impressive, um, their scale, their scale, <laughs> their scale makes it sound uh, a little bit lower. But actually, it is a pretty, a pretty significant uh, chance. So this is the way the H Triple R shows this. And for those of you that uh, that live in this area or have friends in this area, another day to pay attention to the warnings. Make sure you have two or three ways of hearing about warnings. Uh, whether it's off alerts on your phone, uh, a weather radio, um, have television radio with that sort of information available to you. A couple of areas pop up. This is in the late afternoon. This is uh, close to sunset. One area here in Iowa, another area here in Illinois. But the one that scares me the most is the one that happens well after dark here in southern Missouri. This would be late at night, and these cells here also have the possibility of having tornadoes, and they could be rain-wrapped tornadoes well after dark. And, uh, and yeah, we may see some more of that well after dark in Arkansas as well. So another day to be on high alert in the, in the Midwest, Iowa, Missouri, and parts of Arkansas. That's everything I've got for you today. I will be on KCRA today at uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, and 11. And I'll have a Facebook live chat tonight uh, at 8 o'clock, of course, on the usual Facebook channel. So enjoy the day. Try to stay warm this morning. The afternoon should be okay with temperatures in the low 60s. If you like these daily briefings, go ahead and subscribe. And I'll talk with you later. Make it a great day.